So today we're going to be doing a, a few things uh, using a cold smoke generator. So we're going to be smoking some cheese, which is nice and easy. I also smoke some salt as well. And then we're going to be smoking some nuts. And that's basically what this video is going to be around more than the other two. You'll see them going into the smoker, but it's the nuts that's going to be like the main event. So cold smoking. So we use a cold smoke generator and you fill this up with a very fine uh, wood dust. And that gives you a slow burn, so you don't get any heat from um, the, your smoke. You just get a small smolder. And that is how we can do things like cheese and smoked salmon and things like that, because you're not actually cooking the items. You're keeping it at a very low heat and you're still infusing things with smoke. So the wood chips I've decided to use today are maple. So I got my stuff from Hot Smoked uh, last Christmas, just before last Christmas. And uh, we've been cold smoking in the colder months um, using this. So it's quite easy. The, um, the cold smoke generator is set up as a maze. So you put your wood dust all the way around the maze and if you fill it all the way into the middle then you get about 10 hours of a cold smoke so I'm only going along three sides and that should give me about four and a half to five hours um, because I don't need that longer smoke so I'm not going to waste my wood dust um, by filling it all the way into the middle and then having to try and put it out I'm just going to partly fill the cold smoke generator so general rule of thumb is that you put it in there you don't compact it down too much and you don't want to have it too deep because if you are going all the way into the middle and you filled it up too much then it can jump across the edges of the maze um, and then you're going to get a it's going to burn out quicker because it's going to jump onto the inside of the maze while still going around the outside of the maze and it won't give you that longer cook so you want to make sure you keep it nice and level and nice and low and just say not compact it too much because if you compact it too much then you're going to have combustion issues Another thing to bear in mind with your wood dust is to make sure that it is 100% dry. Because if you've got the slightest amount of moisture in there, then this won't work, it just won't burn. So always keep your wood dust indoors. Make sure that it's properly packaged so that you're not going to get any moisture into the packs. So we've filled up our wood dust in the, uh, the cold smoke generator. And to light this, it's quite simple. It comes with a tea light. They generally all come with a tea light, whether they're the square ones or the uh, the circular ones like a snail shell. Uh, so you light a tea light and you pop it under the end and you leave that there for a couple of minutes and that lights that um, the wood dust and then you blow your candle out and then it will smolder all the way around. So we're going to get that lit so that um, we've got that going nicely while we prepare our items. So when I'm cold smoking, I've found the best way to um, make sure that you get a nice even smoke around things without putting things on my grill grates, which is some people have pointed out on always the cleanest because I won't take them in and scrub them. I just brush them off and scrape them off every time before I'm cooking. So the best way to do it, I've found, is to use a splatter guard. So these are available on Amazon. This is an old Ikea one. I've had this for years but I've found a link for these on Amazon. Um, so I'll make sure I leave an affiliate link in the description below. So that no extra cost to you, but I do get a small kickback if you was to buy them. The advantage with these is are that they've got incredibly small holes. So the smoke is going to be able to get through here and the food's not. So I like to use these because you can put your herbs and spices and things on here and infuse smoke into them, including the salt that we are doing today, because it is such a fine knit on here, the salt won't get through but the smoke can and infuse our flavours. So I thoroughly recommend when you're cold smoking, grabbing hold of one of these. Um, as I say, the smoke will come through. Oh, smoke will come through, but your food can't. So we've got that ready. So it's time to, uh, for lack of a better term, have a play with our nuts. So I'm using peanuts today and I'm using cashews today and I'm going two different flavours on um, the two different types of nuts. So the first one that we're gonna do is we're gonna do the cashews. So these are already cooked. 
when, when you buy them from a supermarket, I've just bought them out of a, from the supermarket in a packet. So we need something to make them slightly tacky because otherwise you're not going to be able to infuse any smoke into them. Because they're quite dense, you can't get smoke in. So you're only really cold smoking the flavour that you put on the outside. So we need to make them slightly tacky. So what I use on the cashews is a very, very small amount of mustard. And as I say, it's just to give them a slight tackiness. So I mix that through in a bowl with that small amount of mustard. And then I'm going on with my flavourings. So the first flavouring that we're using today, I've decided to go for Herbie Garlic Butter from the Rusty Barbecue Company. So I'll grab that from behind me. I love this stuff. This stuff goes on absolutely everything. It's, it's branded as like going on potatoes and things like that, but I put it on all sorts of stuff. It's quite possibly my favourite rub from the Rusty Barbecue Company. So we just use a liberal amount of this, sprinkle it on top of them cashews, and uh, toss that through so that we've got a nice coating on there. And the, the mustard and the garlic and the buttery flavour is going to work really, really well with the cashews. So we're going to get that onto our um, splatter guard. So as you can see, I've already got my cheese on there and I've already got my salt on there. If you are going to be doing things like cheese, then I like to chop them up into smaller blocks because you're going to get a better smoke infusion into them smaller blocks. And then I vacuum pack them as smaller blocks. So when you get one out, you've only got a small amount to eat without it being in the fridge too long open. And then you can open another packet. So we've already got them on. I'm going to get our cashews on there as well. Try and make sure that you don't cross contaminate any of the, um, the rub onto the cheese. I've got a small amount on there, but it's just obviously that's just going to flavor that piece of cheese just slightly. But if you can and you've got the space, then make sure that you've got um, room so that you're not touching things up against each other. So the next nut that we're going to be using is peanuts. So again, these are just cooked peanuts that are in the supermarket um, straight out of a plastic bag. So we pop them into a bowl and with these, I'm going on with a small amount of hot sauce. So again, we're just going to toss that through and we're just looking to make sure that outside of them nuts are tacky. And then my rub of choice on these, because we've already gone on with a bit of hot sauce, I want a nice uh, barbecue rub that's got a bit of kick in there so I use the Rusty Barbecue Company's Sweet Soul. So this is, it's got South American flavours in there to me so I've used this to make things like um, pulled chicken enchiladas and things in the past. It's a fantastic rub, it's got a little amount of heat in there and it works really well on the peanuts with the hot sauce. So we've tossed them through, we've added some of that Sweet Soul rub on there um, giving them a nice coating and then we're going to go again onto that splatter guard. I've now already put it into the Kamado because there's too much on there moving about. So pop them on in there. So that cold smoke generator before I put the, uh, the splatter guard in there, all I did was I blew that candle out as you saw me do earlier on, and I've put that into the bottom of the Kamado. If you haven't got a Kamado and you've only got a kettle, then it's gonna work in there. All you want is a sealed environment that you can have the bottom vent fully open, top vent fully open, and it's just gonna fill that chamber up with a nice sweet smoke and flavor your food. So let's say we've already got that in the bottom, bottom vent open, top vent open. Put the cheese, nuts, and salts onto your splatter guard in the top, shut the lid down, and leave it for four hours. It is as simple as that. Well, I say we leave it for four hours. With the nuts, sometimes it's best to go in and give them a little turn um, now and again because they are sitting quite close to each other. So I tend to do that after about an hour and a half, just give them a little jiggle about um, and then shut that lid back down and leave it until it burns out. So I got four and three quarter hours out of um, using the cold smoke generator on the three sides. If you want a less of a smoke, then maybe only do two sides and you're probably going to get about three-ish hours out of that which is good enough for cheese um, there's lots of different flavors that you can put on there I've used maple today because I really like the way that that infuses into the nuts it works well with the cheese as well and it works well with the salt so we've got that on we've given our nuts a turn sort of halfway through so now we want to take stuff 
off of of the barbecue so i find the best way to seal up these things is to put them into a vacuum sealer or if you don't have a vacuum sealer you can use cling film and wrap them really tight so your cheese you need to leave that to mature for about three to four weeks before it's time to eat and that really um, balances the smoke out right the way through the cheese by doing that your nuts you want to be eating them within two weeks but they ain't going to last that long because once you try them they are just they're so good so what i tend to do with the nuts is i vacuum pack them for at least 24 hours and again that just makes sure that every part is equally flavored right away of course where they, as i say they've been touching each other you might not quite get a little bit of smoke into them parts that are touching if you vacuum pack them leave them for 24 hours it balances everything out all the way across if you are interested in vacuum sealers then make sure you check out my video link in the description below for the Cromfy, back, Cromfy vacuum sealer bit of a mouthful um, that I reviewed earlier on this year I can't live without it now we vacuum seal so much and it lasts so much longer in the fridge and the freezer so that's it we've got no taste test because I took these uh, nuts away with me when we went away last weekend with our friends and they went down a treat um, the girls massively loved the cashews um, they did like the peanuts as well but the cashews were what they really enjoyed um, and we're probably going to put some more different flavors on them again between now and Christmas so that we're just going to keep topping up the smoked nuts because they are they're so moorish once you've had them once you're just going to want to keep doing them so that's about it for this video so if you like what we're doing please make sure that you like the video make sure you subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment let you know what you think cheers